Welcome back. The creative arts industry has for years been treated like a minor industry with minimum or no regulations protecting the rights of the artists. People are often baffled by most celebrated artists and their careers poor, but very few know the struggles that they have to go through to be paid a reasonable fee and that they are not paid recurring fees for their work that is normally exploited by producers and broadcasters. This is the typical story, especially in the fields of music and TV soapies in South Africa. The well-known Jack Devnarian, popularly known as Rajesh in Isidingo, has together with other colleagues and as well as the chairman of the South African Guild of Actors taken the struggle to parliament and public platforms. He joins us to tell us more about the struggle of our celebrities who provide us with so much entertainment yet have to go through so much pain themselves. Well, Jack, pleasure to catch up with you. Thank Once you, Broughton. I appreciate your Good time. Good to be part of your network. No, thank you very much. <laughs> very important person to have on the show as well. Thank now, you. Um, just recently you were before Parliament. Tell me a bit more about the amendment bill that you wanted further input into and that you would like uh, the government to promulgate into law. It's been 51 years since the Performance Protection Act finally has an opportunity to be revised and to be brought in terms of our modern industry. Mm -hmm. So you had the Performance Protection Act of 1967, which came about before internet, before even TV started mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. So the act as it stands is never good enough, never close enough to what the industry is now to do its job, to protect the actors. This is the opportunity now through the DTI and the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee to look at how do we revise this act so that it delivers on its mandate. It must be able to fulfill its intention to protect the rights of actors. And as part of that, there have been extensive um, stakeholder engagements through the DTI, and this was a wonderful opportunity for public hearings and submissions, especially by industry stakeholders, to come before the parliamentary committee to say, this is what we envisage the amendments should be in order to bring the act in line with our modern industry. And I think Saga took a lot of time, put in a lot of effort to consult, mm. uh, not just Saga members, but um, Saga is an affiliate of the International Federation of Actors. So we have extensive resources available to us where we can go to our compatriots around the world, other actors, unions, and guilds around the world to ask them, how does it work in your territory? How does it work in your legal system? You know, I want us to take a step back, Jack, so we can at least give context to this discussion, right? Mm. And we'll go back to the whole point of the regulations of the law. What is happening in the industry at this time, or historically has been happening up to this time in South Africa, uh, in relation to the actors' rights and their fees and the exploitation of their work through the work that they've done and the on-selling by the broadcasters. What in a state of affairs, as it were? It's been rampant exploitation. And we have to make a distinction about what kind of exploitation we're talking about. Yeah. Because you have commercial exploitation, which is a legitimate exercise. This is where a broadcaster or a producer owns the rights to this TV show or to this movie that we made, and they will then take it to market. And that is called commercial exploitation. Yeah. And that's a perfectly acceptable exercise. In fact, actors support that very much because that's how we get to extend our network and to be for our, for our work to be showcased as mm, well. Yeah. What we are trying to avoid is the other kind of exploitation, which we have seen in so many industries in this country leading up to the advent of labor laws that protect workers. Now remember, you have actors as, we function as freelancers, as yeah. independent contractors, mm. and as such, we fall outside the scope of protective labor laws, uh, the kind of legislation that is designed to protect the workers and the most vulnerable people in industry. Uh, for example, you would have the Basic Conditions of Employment Act or the Compensation for Occupational Injuries. Um, and all these things are designed to protect employees within a, a working environment. Yeah. Actors, however, are not employees. Being freelancers, we fall outside the scope of that protection. And that means that even without the rights to collective bargaining, actors don't have the right to sit across the table from a producer to come up with a contract that is equitable, that is fair, that says that my rights will be protected, and that will guarantee me a small percentage share 
when commercial exploitation also takes mm. place. Mm. So the result of that, unfortunately, is that as we saw in the case of Odwa Shweni, the actor who was tragically killed um, falling over the waterfall in, on a shoot in the Drakensberg, it was entirely because the, the industry rights and, and the regulations that become part of how we do and deliver mm. our work mm. are not protected in law. So it would be things like, let's say, which are taken for granted in the workplace. Absolutely. Occupational safety, for instance. Yes. Insurance against, not only insurance, but making sure that your workspace is safe and that you have access to the appropriate facilities to help you do your work whilst, Absolutely. whilst working. We remain unprotected. We cannot claim leave, for example. Um, for, for female performers, there is no such thing as maternity benefits. Um, there is no such thing as you know, occupational injuries or, you know, uh, claiming if you, you, were, you were injured on set. And um, we fully appreciate as actors that when we go into the industry, our eyes should be wide open to this. And it's not always the case that actors are. And this is where I find the, the industry and the work of actors is being truly exploited. What we are seeing, Bratum, is that we are, on one hand, we are creating a barrier to entry for new talent to come in because we are saying there's nothing in it for you. But I've had people blame the artists themselves, the mm. actors saying it's because they are badly organized and when they get organized, they spend a lot of time squabbling amongst each other. In a sense, uh, the squabbling part or differences can be, under, can be understood because the fees you charge for your work are not standardized. So it's every person for himself mm. in this kind of industry. So it's difficult to standardize the fees that must be paid uh, and, and maybe to include some of the things that you'd like to have included in the contracts of actors. Very true. And I, th I think the fact that we don't have standard rates and things like that goes back to the fact that we don't have collective bargaining rights. If we had those rights, we would be able to stipulate that here's an actor of 20 years, 30 years experience. They've done so many movies uh, in South Africa and internationally. They deserve a minimum rate of X. And here's somebody coming into the industry yesterday. They've just done their qualification in performance. It should be less than that. But without any kind of collective bargaining forum, we are never able to establish standard rates. So. Um, and it goes back to your point uh, also in, in this, uh, this very conversation about are actors organized? And I have to agree we are not organized enough. We don't speak with a kind of, of solidarity that would make the legislature take us very seriously. And we need to establish that kind of voice, that kind of presence in order to establish credibility. Here's another thing that I think is confusing to the public. You are celebrities. Mm -hmm. There you are, it's Jack Dabnarin. Uh, somebody looks at you and says, that, that's, uh, that's Rajesh. And Rajesh is slaying it. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't be complaining about this. But what is the worst form of exploitation that you've heard of in uh, the industry that you would like us to know about? Because we only know, you know, your postings on social media. Yes. And, all the nice things, the awards that you guys win, that's the, that's the, the positive side of the business yes. that we see, the lovely stuff. I but will what's give the worst you stuff? My, my personal experience, and I challenge anyone to call me up on this, because for 15 years on Isidingo and SABC3, I had signed an annual independent contractor's uh, agreement. That, that was my contract and it lasted for a year and I was very fortunate in that I had producers who said we'd like to keep Jack around and we kept signing that contract for 15 years. Yeah. Contained in that very contract is what is called the commercial exploitation clause that gives me, the actor, the right as a principal performer to claim a certain amount every time that show is sold and licensed to other territories around the world and on to other broadcasters. Now, I know that Isidingo was broadcast in other territories on other broadcasters. I know this. And yet, according to that clause, there was supposed to have been a discussion with me in order to arrive at a figure that would be a fair remuneration for commercial exploitation. Mm. That conversation, that negotiation never, ever happened. And you're talking about a contract that has been in place and has been given to all actors on soapies, 
or drama series or sitcoms uh, produced by the SABC since 1997. We are talking about, in my particular case, in 15 years, not once, mm. did anyone come to me to say, Jack, let's arrive at that figure yes. because this is what we, we owe you. Yes. And that for me is the worst kind of exploitation because as much as I am delivering my performance and I am fulfilling a need that is established by the channel to provide entertainment to its audiences, I'm very much a part of that and I give my heart and soul to it yeah. because that's who I am. Yeah. But within that contract, I am not satisfied that the broadcaster itself has satisfied its own obligations. So the information was withheld from you be, uh, simply because the conversation never took place, right? Well, I, we kept asking, and especially as the South African Guild of Actors, we have been asking, and we are asking the broadcaster, please specify to us what seasons, what episodes have been licensed to other broadcasters so that we have a clear breakdown of what it is that is owed to us. Let us negotiate. All right, let's look at the ABC of your industry then in a moment and uh, find out what do you need to know when you become an actor and you enter this industry. I mean, there are old hands here, the veterans who know what the struggle is all about. They even know what you need to do to become successful in this business. I'm with uh, Jack Devnarain, who is popularly known as Rajesh. He's my guest. We continue our conversation in a moment.